And we begin tonight's bulletin with some uh, developments within ADB. Shareholders of the bank have made drastic changes to the company's regulations. Key among them is limiting government's hold on the bank. They also voted to allow the reconstituted board of the bank to nominate and appoint the managing director and the chairman of the board of directors. These changes to the company's act were made at an extraordinary general meeting at the National Theatre in Accra today. Speaking to Joy Business after the meeting, Deputy Managing Director of Investment Firm, Bellstar Capital, which holds majority shares in ADB Bank, Patrick Kinsley-Nina, uh, said these changes were critical to help put the bank on a strong footing. It is only right that once an initial public offer has been effected and 450 shareholders approximately, I'm not sure about the total number, but minimum of 400 shareholders have come to add to it. The, share, the, the, the company's regulation must reflect that. In fact, there's more that we wanted to do, but we want to take our time and go through the regulations. But this one has to do with the governance of the company. And it's only important that those who've put so much money in it and have put their interest in the bank will have a say in the direction of the bank. It's good you said that there were more things that you wanted to do. One of them is to make these sweeping changes to maybe possibly propose a new MD. Um, that's, as we mentioned, it's the board that's going to do that. So I cannot tell you, you here. have a majority hold on this board? We do have a majority or we will have a majority, but we'll wait till the board sits and the board is convened and then we can take it from so there. Do more of a, doing more of a, call it a corporate coup, maybe some would say? Don't, um, I wouldn't say so. I think that we are going to sit down with government, as you saw from the regulation. We've proposed that government will have three seats. So we are working with government. So we are not going to um, get up and say, oh, we are doing this, we're doing that. No, we will work with government every step of the way because we, are, we both have interests. So it's only, it's only meet and right that we do that. From the shareholding, you will be a majority shareholder in this company, all other things being equal. Are you going to make proposed changes in nominating a new MD to this bank? Uh, I cannot stand here and say that. We will discuss will you that. Table that at the it next is not impossible. We are going to have to look at it. But you see, this is the whole reason why this exercise is happening. Because until today, and even until the annual general meeting, when the board is convened, we do not have any access to company. The, the company has not even signed their accounts. So you can't even tell whether losses are being made. So there's so much that this is, this is just to pave the way to give us as investors the latitude to work with government and make sure that we take this bank where it belongs. We've been picking the reaction of former Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Edouard Nantier, and he described the exercise as victory for corporate governance. Well, it's, it's, it's a good thing uh, when you have uh, this such proposal as coming from a shareholder and giving the opportunity for other shareholders to agree on. I, I think basically it's, it's a good sign. Some have called this more of a corporate coup because uh, the single largest in it, uh, shareholder uh, wants uh, to put in place their own MD and all those things. And that is why all those things are happening. No, I don't think we pass any resolution here appointing anybody as MD. Those are left for the directors to decide. But my you, uh, under the company's act, once you have 5%, you can call for an AGM and propose resolutions and allow the entire members to vote for or against it. But you think it's a good thing for corporate governance and what is happening, also reducing government's hold on the bank? No, no, the government doesn't have to have a hold on the bank. Government is not saying you want to have a hold on the bank. Government has 30-something percent, 32 percent. And the good thing is that uh, they have, even shareholders have agreed to allow government to nominate a maximum of three people on the board. So government hasn't uh, lost it. I'm that uh, the holding previously would have... They, they, were, not, they, were, they, they held about 50-something percent, mm. but that has changed. And nobody uh, forced the government to, to allow that. The government deliberately uh, did that listing to ensure that uh, the uh, Ghanaians and uh, other, other shareholders would have some shares in the company. You think it's good for corporate government? It is, because you see, I have always been saying that government should help us bring all the government institutions onto, onto the market. 
So if the government has brought one institution to the market, that is best. The other institutions that government has more than 50%, sometimes getting to 90, 80%. We appeal to government always to ensure that part of its, its uh, uh, shares on these uh, companies are brought uh, to the stock exchange for ordinary Ghanaians to also have a say in some of these uh, companies. So that's a good thing. Away from that, and Ecobank recorded the highest profit in the banking industry for last year. That's the conclusion one could draw after going through published results of 30 commercial banks. But how did other banks fare, and what could be the impact on their performance? George Afe has more. Ecobank recorded a profit before tax of 457 million Ghana cities, which was still the highest among the published results so far, despite the marginal dip in its earnings compared to what was recorded for 2015. GCB followed with 446 million Ghana cities, whilst Barclays had 423 million Ghana cities. Among the top banks, or call them the big seven banks, Barclays had the highest growth in profit compared to what they had in 2015. But it wasn't all rosy for these big banks, as Stambeck, Cal, and Fidelity Bank all witnessed a decline in earnings compared to what they had in 2015. In terms of loans and deposits, the results were mixed. While some banks saw strong growth in this area, majority of the banks didn't see any significant increase in this area. Loans that banks fear might go bad was still a big problem, as some posted very high impairment, with the Bank of Ghana putting the amount at around 7 billion Ghana cities as at April this year. Total industry profits recorded some significant increase to reach 739 million Ghana cities. For some, for some these good earnings, despite the challenging economic environment, could mean some increased tax for the state, good returns to investors and shareholders depending on the dividend policy of that bank, and also some bonus for staff. Also, some banks have a policy of plowing back these earnings into the business, a development that could lead to some strong growth in branches and even leading to some marginal reduction in the cost of credit in the country. Now, Ghana has signed a memorandum of understanding with Equatorial Guinea to purchase liquefied natural gas, LNG, for powering its thermal plants. This is part of an initiative by Equatorial Guinea known as Gas for Africa, which is aimed at selling about 50% of its LNG to the African region. Speaking at the 8th Annual Ghana Oil and Gas Summit in Accra, Minister of Mines, Industry and Energy, of Equatorial Guinea, Imbanga Obiang, disclosed that Ghana will be the first country in Africa to benefit from the initiative. I don't want to say that the West African pipeline is not a good initiative, we should do it, but we should have those alternatives. We have the representative of General Electric, that they have a very good presentation regarding the virtual pipeline. It means that you don't need to do a pipeline. If you want gas in any corner, you can transport it. And this is not something that Equatorial Guinea have invented. They do it in Australia, they do it in Marbella, they do it in the United States, they do it in Japan, Korea. Why in Africa they cannot do it? It's to send ship of LNG, put it in container, and take it to very remote places, and they will be working with gas. So I have to say, and I want to thank my, my fellow minister from Equatorial, uh, from Ghana, that yesterday we are starting an initiative, it's called LNG to Africa. And we are starting with Ghana. We have signed a memorandum of understanding with Ghana to look the possibility for us to send LNG because it's very sad that we can negotiate contracts with Chile, with uh, Singapore, with Korea, and we are sending LNG every day. But we can't send one single drop of LNG in Africa. So we're going to put personally in Equatorial Guinea, put all the efforts to make sure that we can supply LNG. Because if you have LNG, you can deliver to any place, any corners that you need, 
and you don't need a pipeline or anything. You just need to have a power plant, a regasification plant, and you do it like they do in Tanzania, like, I mean, in, in Australia, in Spain, in different other places. The issue about the floating LNG, sooner or later is going to happen. And we are a little country, but uh, like Napoleon, we like to do big things. And we want to be one of the first ones to have a floating LNG. But we have put condition to our off-takers. The condition is that 25 to 30% of that gas need to be to the initiative LNG to Africa. It will be gas going to countries like Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, anybody who wants LNG. Of course, they need to pay, so this is not free. <laughs> it's a business. Yeah. Now, Minister for Agriculture, Dr. Fria Kutu says his outfit is working with commercial banks in the country to help secure funding for vegetable exporters. This comes as government seeks to have the ban on vegetable exports from the country lifted. In an interview with Joy Business, Dr. Kutu said the uh, move is towards supporting private businesses in the vegetable export business. You know that vegetables, fruits and vegetables are, are more delicate uh, products. So they have a different requirement in terms of the refrigeration and the handling. It's more expensive, it's the high end of the, of the market. So it needs uh, 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 specialist interventions of the private sector, of the kind that we've seen here uh, exhibiting their goods and the people that we've met this afternoon. Uh, we need to make sure as they themselves said, that they are well uh, healed when it comes to financing requirements because their financing requirements are much higher than ordinary uh, uh, agricultural produce. And we'll be talking to the banks to ensure that once the ban is lifted, they will make facilities available for them to expand their activities so that whatever we've lost in the last two years, uh, we can catch up in a very short period of time to add to our portfolio of uh, agricultural exports to enhance uh, production and export earnings in this country. Well, still in the agri space, the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development has set up a tax force to clamp down on illegal fishing in the country's waters. The ministry is also employing some technology which will help to track foreign vessels that are uh, operating illegally in Ghanaian waters. The dangers posed by illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing as well as the activities of foreign nationals in Ghanaian waters uh, were some of the were some of the uh, issues that uh, was, were raised by the uh, ministry. The ceremony which happened at the Tema Fishing Harbour uh, saw key players in the fisheries sector, government officials, members of parliament from coastal communities, metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives, as well as associations in the fisheries industry take part. And you're watching Business Live. Moving on, residents of Manso in Krang in Ashanti region are accusing a Sanko mining company, which operates in the area of environmental pollution and neglect of the local community. The youth of the town have petitioned the Regional Security Council over the matter as tension continues to rise. Nana Asensu Mensa followed RegSec to the site and uh, will be bringing you his report. But I want to take you now to Gimpa. Uh, something very exciting happening there. There's a 10 elevator pitch competition uh, underway. Our reporter Charles Aite is live for us. Charles, up for grabs is $7,500. Uh, dollars, I suppose, for the ultimate winner. What's taking place where you are? All right, so you're watching Business Live. We are finding it difficult to get Charles on that line, but we'll quickly do that and get back to him. But residents of Manson Krang in the Ashanti region, I beg your pardon, let me grab that, accusing Asanko, a mining company which operates in the area of environmental pollution and neglect of the local uh, 
uh, community. Let's get more in this report. <laughs> The youth cite Asanko mining for flouting environmental laws and also failing to fulfill terms of an agreement to allocate a quota of job placement to the indigenes. They say the only source of drinking water is contaminated with sodium cyanide used by the mine while many places in the town have become flood prone due to activities of the company. Mine officials, however, dismiss allegations of cyanide pollution of water sources in the area. Operations Manager Charles Amwa told Regional Minister Simon Osai Mensah during a fact-finding visit to the mine, measures are in place to deal with potential incidents of flood. We look at them and uh, those that are not correct, we let them know that it's not correct. And those that require investigation further, we do it. And then the, our view is to bring it to conclusion successfully whatever allegation they put there. Mr. Amwa also explains the company has been unable to employ the required number of skilled labor in the community because checks revealed those who were presented are not indigenous. It will be appropriate that uh, they come on board here for a strip proof of what, how we go about even our employment processes. You came here and we've shown them to you and then uh, you've seen it. So they must come and then uh, we'll sit down and then we'll go through them. Regional Minister Mr. Osai Mensah, who led the RECSEC delegation, urged company management to constantly engage all stakeholders to resolve their differences. All the have sizable number of people that have been engaged from the community, even though the community members are still not satisfied. But we've told them to engage them, explain some of these issues to them, especially the district chief executive, who is also uh, somebody who a native of the area so that he can engage the community leaders and make sure that he explains some of these issues to them to bring peace up, uh, between the company and the community people. Nanasa Sumesa reporting. Okay, you're watching Business Live. I want to go back to Gimpa now because uh, we can establish a link with Charles Aite, who is reporting on the 10 elevator pitch uh, contest that is underway. Take it away, Charles. Rightly stated, Daryl, as you could see right here at the Moot Auditorium at the Gimpa Law School, the uh, contest, the award at night for that matter, is just about taking place in the next few minutes. And uh, this is going to be seeing top entrepreneurs across our uh, Ghana's tertiary institutions win up to $7,500, you know, for their innovative ideas in the world of inter entrepreneurship. As you could see, some of the contestants are at this seated just, just behind me. But I do have here with me the founder and chief executive officer of uh, 10 uh, Ghana to help us understand why this very contest this very evening and what they seek to achieve, especially in bridging this situation of unemployment in our country today. Thank you very much, sir. And we've been having discussions time and time again as to the reason why we're having such contests as, as these. And I mean, tonight is the ninth, the awards ceremony. What are we expecting? All right, um, this is uh, um, a journey that we've been through for over a year now. You know, um, it, it, is, it is projected that by 2020, um, uh, four, three out of four African are going to be the youth. And that already we are facing unemployment challenge in this country. And uh, what are we doing? Most of our students, our graduates come out from school and look for white collar job. Those do, do not exist. So we are trying to find an alternative for them. Whilst they are in school, they should be thinking how to actually develop a business idea. Okay, and but just not to take the levers yeah. out of the seal. I mean, you have been screening close to about 150 entrepreneurs, you know, potential entrepreneurs who are, you know, potentially going to be winning this very, you know, award this very evening. Screening all these 150 contestants, what have you noticed, you know, happens to be the th one thing that most of them could be lacking? Right. Um, basically, what we are lacking in this, uh, this country is the support system. After going through 156, you know, uh, business proposals, you realize that these young ones have the potential to actually launch a business into the market. But what they are lacking is the support system. They, they, some of them don't even know where to go, how to register the business, how to start it. And that's why Tangana do exist. We exist to provide all this uh, to these young ones 
and then couple with it the funds. So all that we're saying is that the youth have no excuse right. of not launching that business idea. All right, Kelvin, thank you very much. That was the chief executive and founder of Ten Ghana. But of course, this discussion cannot end on a very good note without having some interaction with the contestants. And I do have here two of them seated, very confident, and uh, they are just waiting up to see whether or not they could make it to this very evening's awards. Okay. Yeah, so uh, just in 30 seconds, okay, why did you contest and why do you, why do you think that you could win? Mm, the reason being that the idea that I'm having is to solve problems. Okay, what was your idea as well? Um, my idea is to train young ladies in the latest technologies and to prepare them for the future of work. And I'm All very right. confident I'm going to win. Okay, so very, 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 very innovative ideas there right here from the Moot Auditorium here at the Gamepa Law School. Charles Aite, thanks very much indeed. Of course, we bring you more from there in our subsequent bulletins. Let's move on now. All is set for the Gardenier Fair organized by Online Marketplace uh, for AfricanGoosejifa.com. The event which takes place tomorrow is dedicated towards uh, celebrating Ghanaian innovation and creativity. Several Ghanaian entrepreneurs who are adding value to Ghana's raw materials will be displaying their products at the Impact tab in Accra. And that's venue for the fair. We've been speaking with the CEO of Impact Hub, William Edem Senyo com has um, dedicated their platform to supporting local uh, manufacturing which is one of the, the big things we keep talking about but no one actually does something that uh, trickles down to um, artisanal products and all of that beyond that the reason we're also excited about Defa.com is that it's aggregating um, all these local products and then repackaging them in a way that speaks to an aspirational class, both locally and foreign. And that's where the real opportunity is, when we can make Ghanaian products to become aspirational products, not just everyday things that uh, we all need, but things that speak to Ghanaian innovation and creativity. And they do all of that. It's a neat little package that speaks to uh, the kinds of things we like to support. And that's why we're supporting this. Uh, finally, I'll ask you about your expectations ahead of the fair. You are, this is going to be the venue for the fair. Yeah. Yes. Um, what are your expectations? How do you think this is going to make an impact, really, in, in our country? Yeah, um, this should be one of many that puts Ghanaian products uh, right, uh, at the center um, of um, um, uh, the city over the um, weekend, which is we are celebrating Ghanaian ingenuity. We are celebrating Ghanaian innovation and drive and determination. And more importantly, um, the group of Ghanaians who believe that unique and authentic products can be made in Ghana and can not only sell in Ghana but can sell globally at a premium. So on Saturday I want um, everyone coming here to be, be live that spirit which is become evangelist for the products they see here and then um, hopefully we can elevate the status of made in Ghana products if not among anyone if not anything, among ourselves um, as a society, and that we can create quality products. And hopefully it's also a big part um, celebrating amazing products. You're watching Business Live. We are taking a short break. We'll have our interview of the day after this. Business Live Today. Our interview of the day now and chairperson of the Chartered Institute of Builders, Roxin Dogbega, is pushing for a policy to encourage the use of local products in construction to help minimize the cost of buildings. Interview of the day. Currently what we find in the country is that local contractors are not paid interest on delayed payments. Yeah, where it even where provision is made for in the, in the contract documents. Unfortunately, government contractors suffer this. Clients, contractors work for in, in, in Ghana, particularly in the government side, uh, public sector space. They do not honor these obligations. Unfortunately, local Ghanaian contractors are not able to claim for the interest on delayed payment for fear of victimization. Yeah, and those are some of the woes of the sector. By this, the capacity of the contractor to raise funding is reduced. 
the contractors in Ghana are no longer attractive to banking sector for support. Because interview of the day and thanks for watching our program we are back next week with some more business news my name is Daryl Kwao keep it here on Joy News